Yesterday I was reviewing work by a designer I work with and she was showing me uh, a home page for the startup that she works with. Now, like visually, this looks well, pretty well, like a lot of home pages that you've seen had the usual kind of structure with a big uh, hero section with a call to action, then had some basic features and then images and text. And when I was looking at this, I asked her, wait, what's what's the story of this homepage? Why is this content there? There was a section about the product and there was a section uh, with about us. And I asked her, wait, why is there a section for about us in the homepage? doesn't make any sense for me and she said well we have an about us page so I thought it would make sense to put a section about this and link to that page I told her but it doesn't make sense in the context of a home page what is the story that you're trying to tell with this home page and she said story I don't know I just got a bunch of text from the content writer and then I'm just placing them in the home page and I just told her no 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 you have to understand that a home page for a company for a business is like actually giving giving a pitch a sales pitch so there's the sections is like a story that is folding step by step when the user scrolls the page and that story has to make sense and it has to have a logical order and it's good that you have the section that looks like almost every other website and I'm not even talking about like the visual structure uh, those can be fine but I'm talking about what do you put in there and here, here's what I think is a good way to structure a business website. Um, you start off with the value proposition. Now, it doesn't matter how you, how you design it visually, but this is the first thing that your website should talk about. What is the value behind your business? You know, over 90% of people visiting the website that you're going to design are going to leave within 10 seconds. That's real life it's tough but that's real life and so you have to be super super quick and within one sentence and one image or visual convey the value behind this business why should I watch this why should I read more uh, what's in it for me so this has to be super super quick once you sold on that value once that the user finds like 10 percent of them will find out that this value is interesting to them they will scroll down the next thing that is best to do uh, i think is to use social proof and social proof means our company people have used our company and they say it's good now the reason that you do this is because we humans are social creatures and when we see other people that might be uh, the, the customers of your company's logo it might be testimonials it might be even just numbers like uh, we have processed two billion dollars or something like that when you put social proof uh, people find it gives you credibility and that already gives people something to look forward oh this business is a serious business it makes people more attentive because they think that this is a more serious company so they keep scrolling now is the key part now you have to talk about benefits and I think that this is where a lot of people get this wrong because a lot of people see that a lot of you know business website or startup website has these three columns and people start putting their features so I want to take a minute to dis discuss what's the difference between features or, or what your product does and benefits what you get from it when he does it for you so a good kind of visual uh, idea to look at this is this illustration with with Mario your product is like this flower that gives you superpowers most people talk about the flower this is my product this is what my product does but no, honestly your customers don't care about this this they only care about this part which is your flower will make them grow and, and throw fireballs so let's take for example I don't know a productivity app so people might say yes we have a to-do list and this to-do list have features such as reminders and and uh, you can do categories of lists your your users or your potential customers they don't really care about this because the first thing that you have to do is sell them on the premise of what will happen if they use your productivity app that might be you're never gonna miss a, a you know a deadline again you're you're gonna be more organized you're gonna have more free time that's the thing that you're gonna have after you use that that's the benefit of actually using the product so that's what you have to actually have to talk about first what are the benefits 
only later you can drill down into, okay, now that you understand what we do for you, this is how we do it. This is now we get technical, right? We'll get you more productive because we have X, Y, Z features. So after you've, dis again, after you discuss what you do for them, you discuss how you do it for them, and then you become uh, a bit more technical. You talk about the product, you talk about the features. Then you get to the call to action because every homepage has a call to action that's the goal what do you want people to do um, some people put links to other pages but i think that most businesses want you to take actions such as buy sign up or something that's why you put big call to action buttons um, usually you have call to action also here in the header you have a quick call to action but all, all, also at the end when people have read through your whole kind of let's call it a sales pitch because basically a home page is a sales pitch uh, then you get to the call to action and you you make the ask sign up for free try this product um, you know sign up for our newsletter or whatever and the footer why do we have a footer because it's good for SEO purposes it's good to put more links to other pages um, and basically not a lot of people care about this unless they're looking for a specific something like your privacy policy uh, but you usually put it there because Google likes it they create the sitemap for it they know what content you have on your website so it's basically an SEO thing basically that's a story a very very common story I bet if you take like an average homepage of a startup company product company you know uh, or any business in general which have a good homepage you'll be able to kind of see through now how they structure their content to understand what's the story behind it and how they're trying to lead you through that process now that you know what's the story behind your homepage you can start putting in the content and then design around it um, again the layout and everybody's now using kind of templates or wireframe templates so everything looks the same but it doesn't matter really how it looks some people think that the homepage should have three columns with features or, or whatever it doesn't matter how it looks it only matters how you're telling that story and that the story goes across and that the people at the end doing what you want them to do which is try your product buy something or any other business goal that you might have all right um, I hope that was helpful for you guys um, I think it's I, there is a super interesting article which I will link below this is how I learned this I um, there's um, a company called Unbounce, which they're only specializing in landing page design. I actually never use their product, but they have a great article called The Anatomy of a Landing Page, which I will link below. That's basically what I was talking about. That's basically the premise, but that's how I learned it. But now I'm kind of seeing the metrics and I can see that everybody's using it. So I think it's very important. So go check that out. Have a great day and I will catch you tomorrow.